Greetings everybody and today we're going to be taking a look at a very interesting concept in complex analysis called the residue at infinity. So this is a very useful tool to evaluate certain types of contour integrals, especially when you have a lot of singularities enclosed inside of your contour or in some other cases when you have branch cuts that are enclosed inside of your contour. I'm going to be doing videos on that later on. So those are going to be some quite spicy applications of the residue at infinity. But in this video I want to show that the residue at infinity of our function f of z can be redefined in terms of the residue at zero with a couple of modifications to our function. So first of all, let's take a look at how our normal residues are defined. So consider this complex function f, and we have this set of singularities, our set of complex numbers that are singularities. Um, so it's z sub i, where i is an element of some index set. So if you imagine a picture, let's say this is the complex plane, our function f is defined on here, and maybe it's holomorphic everywhere except for a couple of these points which are our singularities zi. And the question is how do we usually define the residue at each of those singularities? Well the residue at z equals zi of our function f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i times the contour integral of our function f of z dz over some contour and I'm going to call that contour gamma sub i and I'm going to put an extra positive sign here to indicate a positive direction. So what exactly does this look like? Imagine you have some singularity zi, maybe you should mark it in x because it's a singularity, and we want to construct some kind of contour, could be circular, could be not. Uh, usually we like circular contours because they're easier to work with, but we have this contour traversed in the positive direction, and that's our gamma sub i positive. And just an important note about this contour, we need to make this sufficiently small enough so that only the singularity zi is enclosed inside of this contour. We don't want other singularities in inside of here. So we want this to be just small enough so that um, this singularity is enclosed. All right, and now let's apply this exact same definition to the residue at infinity. So the residue at z equals to infinity of our function f of z is equal to 1 over 2 pi i and we're going to have some kinds of contour and I'm going to call it let's say gamma infinity also traversed in the positive direction of our function f of z dz and this is a little bit weird to think about because if you want to apply this same approach to the normal singularities we have to imagine infinity as some kind of points so maybe we have an infinity over here and then we construct our contour gamma infinity positive um, something like that this is a little bit weird to think about because if you have your complex plane you can't just assign some random point to be infinity um, doesn't really work that way what we have to do instead is take a look at something called the Riemann sphere and the Riemann sphere is a really nice compactification of the complex plane and if we take a look at the Riemann sphere we actually introduced um, the point at infinity which is exactly what we need over here so let's take a look at the Riemann sphere quickly so um, I'll just call it R sphere the Riemann sphere what exactly is that well if you imagine your complex plane and you lay it down um, on the ground and you have some kind of sphere that you place on top uh, there's a couple of ways to define this, but I like the one where you just have a sphere of radius one half and you put it onto the top of the complex plane. And the idea is you take the North Pole and we pick a point, let's call this point over here um, Z1. So this point is Z1. And what we do is we connect this North Pole um, Imagine drawing some kind of line between the North Pole and that point. And where it intersects the sphere is the projection of this complex number onto um, the Riemann sphere. So as you can see, every single point on the complex plane will have some kind of corresponding point on the sphere. And the thing is, if you just map the complex plane C onto the sphere, you get the whole entire sphere, but excluding the North Pole. And in order to include the North Pole, we need to extend the complex plane. And what we do is we introduce this new set C hat, which is just defined to be the complex plane union with this element infinity. And this right here is basically the whole sphere. And what exactly is the point at infinity? Well, notice if you pick some point closer to the sphere, um, or the origin, let's call this a Z2, then if you project it onto the sphere, it's going to appear lower on the sphere. 
which means that the further out you go um, in all directions, you're going to be approaching the North Pole. So in fact, the point at infinity on the complex plane, uh, just the usual complex plane, is basically everything that's very, very far away in every single direction. So that's how you can think of the point at infinity on the complex plane, but on the extended complex plane, uh, we just have the North Pole. All right, so we have the Riemann sphere. Let's take a look at how these contours look on the sphere. So let's draw up another complex plane over here. And this is our Riemann sphere. And let's say we have some kind of contour over here that's traversing the positive direction. How exactly does this map onto the sphere? Well, if you take the nearest point, for example, that's going to be lower on the sphere. And if you kind of follow the arrow over here, it's kind of going to the left a little bit. So it's going to be going up because, because it's going further away and then down. So in fact, you get some kind of path that looks like this. The orientation of this contour might look reverse, but that's just because we're looking at it from the outside. What we really want to think about is imagine we're standing inside of the sphere. And if you look at that contour from inside the sphere, in fact, the orientation is still positive. And so maybe we should assign some point in the eye over here, which gets mapped over to here on the sphere. All right, so the reason why we're doing this is because we want to draw some kind of contour that goes around infinity. And well, the point at infinity is all the way up over here. So since orientation is preserved, um, if we're looking at it from the inside, we can just imagine ourselves drawing, drawing this exact same picture um, on the roof of the sphere. So if we draw the exact same picture, we're going to get a contour that's traversed this way. So it might be a little bit hard to visualize, but imagine you're standing in there. And if you start at this point, for example, maybe that's all the way over here and you're going kind of to the left uh, because we're going in the positive direction. Um, that's why our contour is traversed in this manner. All right, so we know what this contour looks like on the Riemann sphere. Let's project it back down onto the complex plane and notice that it's really high up, which means that it's going to be a very big contour once we project it down. So if we project this whole thing down onto the complex plane, we're gonna get a contour that looks something like this. And one will note right here, remember that these contours only enclose those singularities. So we don't want any of the other singularities inside of this. So all the other ZIs will be lying outside. So all these ZIs. So on the Riemann sphere, they're going to be outside of this um, contour, which means that when we project it back down, since they're lower on the sphere, they're going to be mapped inside of the circle. So closer to the origin. So in fact, this contour that I've called gamma infinity turns out to just be a very, very big circle on the complex plane that's traversed in the negative direction because it's going clockwise. And I'm going to give that new contour a name. Let's, I'm going to call it big gamma because it's a big contour. Um, sub R, because we're going to assign it some radius R, traversed in the negative direction. So I'm going to put a negative there. Okay. So what do we have so far? We just heard that the contour gamma sub infinity positive is indeed equivalent to this other contour that we have on the complex plane, big gamma sub r negative, like so. All right, so we're done with the Riemann sphere. Let's go back to our integrals. If we look at this integral, we can do that replacement. So this is now equal to one over two pi i times the contour integral over big gamma sub r negative times f of z dz. All right, and now we're going to be taking a little bit, bit of a detour. I want to take a look at one cool theorem, I guess. Notice that this contour gamma sub r negative, that's this really big contour traversed in the negative direction like so. And notice that it encloses all the singularities of our function f. So these are all our zi's in here. Let's actually start by reorienting this contour because we're going to be applying the Cauchy residue theorem to this thing. So it would be nice if we have a positive orientation and to do that, we can just introduce a negative sign. So this becomes minus one over two pi i times the contour integral over gamma sub r. Now we're going in the positive direction of a function f of z dz. And notice that it reorients this contour in the positive direction and we can just directly apply um, Cauchy's residue theorem. So this is now equal to minus one over two pi i. This contour using Cauchy's residue theorem becomes two pi i times the sum as i varies along this index set of the residues at z equals z i of f of z like so. So this part over here, that's just Cauchy's residue theorem. Notice this two pi i and this two pi i will cancel each other out. 
and we're left with the fact that the residue at infinity is it of a function f of z is equal to minus the sum as i varies along this index set of the residues at all the other singularities, so zi of f of z. And this is why the residue at infinity is so useful, because let's say our function has a lot of these singularities and we have some kind of contour that encloses all of them or even most of them, then instead of calculating each of those residues one at a time, we can just directly apply the residue at infinity and it's going to take care of all of this for us. So let's say we have five residues over here and our contour encloses four of them. Well, we can just take the residue that we're not enclosing and pop it over to the other side. And instead of calculating four residues over here, we're calculating two residues, one at infinity and one well, and the other one we're not dealing with. So that's how the residue at infinity can help us out quite a bit over there. All right, and it immediately follows from this statement. Let's actually just uh, sneak it down here a little bit. Uh, so if we have the sum over all the residues of our function f of z, and we take that and we add it with the residue at z equals to infinity of our function f of z, since we're moving the sum onto the other side, we're just left with a zero. And this is quite interesting because if you sum over all the residues and, and you also add the residue as equals to infinity, then you in fact get zero. And there's a really nice way to kind of visualize this for yourself. If you have your complex plane with a bunch of residues in here uh, from your function, and let's say we choose some kind of contour over here that encloses a completely analytic domain. Um, so f is holomorphic everywhere in there. Then well, Cauchy's integral theorem says that the contour integral over this let's call it gamma, is equal to zero. But what exactly does this thing look like on the Riemann sphere? Well, you have your complex plane, you have your sphere, you have some kind of contour over here, which maybe it maps over to here, and you have a bunch of um, singularities, so maybe the map over here. And notice no singularities lie inside of that circle. And you also get the singularity at infinity, well, notice on the one hand, the interior of this circle is holomorphic, which means that the integral on that boundary is zero. But on the other hand, you can also look at another interior. If you kind of stretch this circle around to the other side, maybe you get this other interior, um, which is basically the rest of the sphere. So it includes all these singularities. And if you use Cauchy's residue theorem, well, it says that the integral over that loop is equal to 2 pi i times the sum of all the residues. So this sum plus the residue at infinity, which is over here. So all the residues, but that's going to give you zero as well. So that's a really nice way to think about it. So we're done with this little detour. Um, we know how the residue at infinity relates to our normal residues. Let's take a look at how we can calculate the residue at infinity. And to do that, we're going to jump back all the way to this line over here. Remember the picture I drew before? This contour is a really big contour and it encloses a bunch of singularities. Let's say we don't want to calculate the sum of all these residues that are in here because that's going to take a while. Wouldn't it be nice to kind of invert everything and get rid of all these singularities inside of here? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to be introducing a transformation on this integral. We're going to let some new variable w be equal to one over z. And what is this transformation going to do? Well, we're going to take this picture and what's going to happen to this contour is well, this is a very big contour and now it's going to turn into a very small contour. Let's call it gamma sub little r. And in fact, when you apply this transformation, the orientation is reversed. So we have a positive sign over here. And you can check that quite easily for yourself. If you let z be equal to r e to the i theta, then if you have one over z, that's one over r and then e to the minus i theta. And this minus reverses the direction of your theta values. So we have that. And notice if we apply one over z to everything, all these singularities will get mapped outside of the contour. So they'll be outside. And the nice thing is the point at infinity will in fact be mapped all the way to the origin, which is quite nice. And since this original contour encloses all the poles, applying this transformation, all these singularities will be outside of this smaller circle. And we're just dealing with one singularity in here, which is really quite nice because then we can just calculate the, the residue at one point only. So if we let W be equal to one over Z, that means that um, Z is equal to one over W. And we have to 
apply a transformation to our differential as well. So if we differentiate both sides, dz is equal to minus one over w squared and dw. And now we have one over two pi i. And now we have the contour integral. And let's call, and I call that new contour little gamma, little r, and then a positive of a function f. Now z becomes one over w. And then dz becomes minus one over w squared. So minus one over w squared dw. All right, now we can just rearrange things a little, a little bit, I guess, just to make it a little bit nicer. And since w is just a dummy variable, we can replace it with a z. So now we have one over two pi i. And then we have the contour integral over little gamma sub r positive of minus one over z squared f of one over z dz. And notice this is just some kind of function. And if we're taking the contour integral over a really small loop around a zero and we're dividing by one over two pi i, notice that that exactly matches with our original definition of a residue. So here we had a contour integral over some contour that's positively oriented of some function. Doesn't really matter what function it is. And we divide it by two pi i. That's exactly what we have over here. We have some kind of contour integral over a positively oriented contour of some function and we divide it by two pi i. So in fact, this becomes the residue at, and since we're enclosing the point at zero, this is z equals zero of whatever this function is. So this is minus one over z squared f of one over z like so and that is exactly the residue at infinity so we've basically proven what we have over here so the residue at z equals infinity of f of z uh, which is what we started with uh, we ended up with this expression which is basically what we have over here so basically we've shown that in order to find the residue at infinity of some complex function that might be a little bit tricky to do we can just simply take the residue at z equals zero of this new function and just one important note that I want to mention, because I got a little bit confused myself when I was m messing around with this, the orientation does matter. So remember the residue at infinity, we had this contour, uh, but we also know that's equivalent to this other contour, gamma sub r negative. Notice that the residue at infinity is defined for a negatively oriented contour. And that contour has to enclose all the poles, of course. So if you find yourself in a situation where you do enclose all these points, but you're going in the positive direction, in fact, you need to reverse everything. And let's say this is some new contour, let's just call it gamma. If you have the contour integral over gamma of f of z, dz, since it's going in the positive direction, you need to add an extra minus sign to this residue. So this becomes minus two pi i times the residue at z equals infinity of your function f of z. Just because you're going around to all the singularities doesn't mean that you can just directly apply the residue and infinity formula. You also have to check for the orientation. So if it's a positively oriented contour, you need to chuck in a neck extra negative sign over here because the residue at infinity is defined for a negatively oriented contour. So that's a quite important note that you should keep in mind. So that basically wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be releasing a couple more videos that use the residue at infinity, uh, especially for contour integration later on in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on those um, hopefully very interesting videos. But uh, yeah, until next time, hope you guys have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.